Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel and today in this video, we are going to look at an important aspect of Livewire which is events. Now, it's not just important for Livewire but rather in any form of programming, events is a very important aspect to grasp on. With events, it allows us to make our code independent or modular in nature. And the idea is that some piece of your code is doing something and when that thing is done, that piece of code will raise an event and then anything which depends on the completion of that event will receive that event because they are listening to that event and then using that input or the data from the event right a lot of things can be done for example if your user registration once completed triggers different things for example it will create an entry in your crm it sends an email to your customer who just registered it sends an email to the admin as well right these are different tasks which needs to happen when the event i mean when the task has completed so a good way of doing this is you raise an event called user registered and then you have listeners who are listening to this event and when they receive that event they know that the user has registered and then they do do their task so with livewire coming to our own topic in livewire as well we have the ability to code our components in the same manner. For example, if let's say this customer form is filled, right, and there is a list over here which needs to update, maybe a counter here needs to update, and I don't want to do it server side, just I'm giving you some random examples, right, and you can definitely have your own set of requirements, but whenever you have these kind of requirements where one event is responsible for changes to other components in your ui the event mechanism can be used to achieve the requirements now with react this can be done through different ways you know you obviously one way is the uh, ability to you know, send props and then you know, get some behavior out of it that is one way but obviously there are certain limitations with you know, how deep you can go with your props then there is the ability to uh, dispatch events even with react you know, use the hooks to get that but in live wire we will see how these things are done now to illustrate the depth at which you can go with your event mechanism and the components nesting what i will do is i'll literally create quite a few components so that i'm able to show you the entire hierarchy the first component i'll just uh, let's actually understand the thing so let's understand what will be the hierarchy so let's say we will have one component which is event page and then we will have a main component and we will also have an independent component at this same level. Then the idea here is that when an event fires on the main component, we should be able to receive that on the independent component, which is just happened to be on the events page, but it is not at all related to the main component. And it should get that event and will be able to uh, react to it then to get into the hierarchy we will have a child component inside the main component and obviously the idea is that when something happens on the main component not only the independent component but the child component is also getting that event okay and just to spice things up a bit I would want that there is a third level or third child component 
which also needs to react when something happened over here. Now, this event is going to be a button click. I'm not going to do any rocket science, but the idea here, what I want to understand, uh, rather make you understand is that when something is happening at this component, you have the ability to react to it from a component which is independent, outside the entire hierarchy. The child component can react to it, which is you know, the just, um, just the next level of child uh, component which is there, right? And you can also have a third level of component which can get the same event and react to it. So there's literally no limitation. I can go as deep as possible. So let's see how things are done. I'll create those components first. So I have the event page. It creates the, the form, uh, sorry, not the form, but the event component PHP file and the blade file as well. And the rest I will use inline components. I don't want blades for them. It's too simple to you know, get that into a blade file. I mean, they will be just simple markups. All right, so we have all our components in place, right? So let's try to first get the route in place, which obviously is, let's just say we'll call it events, okay? And we have the event page, which should get rendered. Let's see. Okay, the page is coming. So, so far, so good. Obviously, nothing extraordinary has been done so far. So, yeah. Um, now, over here, what I will do is at first, if you see our structure, we have to render the main component and the independent component. So let's just go ahead and do that. I just realized I should have put all the components inside a namespace. Um, it would have made sense. And if you at some point feel this is going to be the case, ideally, and it's not very difficult, I just need to change the namespace. I'm thinking I should do that maybe. Hold on. Would reveal in Finder child component event page, not the event page, uh, independent main third. I'll just copy them, paste it over here, and then I'll just need to change the namespace of these components. So I'll have to do events. Let's change that. This should do the trick. Now, if I am trying to load the main component, it will be event events slash dash, sorry, dot main component. Let's see. I hope it doesn't break anything. I haven't added any markup over here so this is the main component let's see yes this is obviously working um we will also do live wire independent and like so these two are working and obviously they would but now what are we trying to do let's first understand that so inside our main component i'll have one input field which will be wire model to a name okay and there would be a button on click i'll have this function so let's quickly start adding those code there's a public property public method save and 
what I would do here is Livewire gives us the ability to dispatch an event whenever something happens. So the way to do that is dispatch. Let's just name it got name and then we can pass any data as you know the rest of the parameters. So what are we saying? We are saying that we have a input field which is wire modeled to the name property and on the click of the button we are not doing anything on the main component we are just dispatching an event. So obviously on this page we have this form and the click me button but it will really not do anything but then let's just say on the independent component if I have this property I'm printing it out so now obviously and let's just say this is default okay so it, it does print that the name is default there's no uh, rocket science to it Okay, let me put a HR so that it is easy to understand, right? Um, but what I'm trying to do over here is, as I said, when an event happens, it will listen to it and it will do something. So, the syntax is that I have a method called, let's just say, got name it can be anything by the way and I add an attribute which is live wire attributes on and then the events name should come whatever is the name of the event that we are dispatching so let's just say we add this now whatever are the parameters or rather what are the whatever are the data points that we are sending while dispatching the event in our case this is the name right we will get that over here okay so now what I will do is this name is equal to the name that I just got and on the listener through this parameter right so event was raised there is a listener which is listening to that event this is the name of the event this is the listener this dispatched or raised an event right and then because this is the listener this public function this method gets executed every time the listener receives this event so if everything is correct what would happen is let me refresh i'll type amitav click me and can you see this got changed why because this method got executed and it applied or it pushed the value of dollar name into this dot name fair enough nothing major so far but now let's see if the same thing is applicable to these child components so i can close out independent and first open up child component so i am And I'll steal a little bit of code just to make things quicker. So in the child component as well, I have a public property called name. I have this method called got name. It can be anything by the way. I can also do child. Okay and i have the same listener because obviously the event that i'm interested in is not going to change right and then i can pick the blade part as well so let's hit refresh do this oh i'm not printing out the um, child component i'll need to do that first I'll put an HR and then live wire. Mm. 
Yeah, this is the one. Click me. And it doesn't change. Why? Let me refresh a bit. Yeah, it does. So I can see that right now the independent component and the child component are receiving the event and they are able to react to it. Now, the third level component, let's try that. So I have my child component. I come over here. I add an HR and then I do live wire events dot So if you understand the rendering is exactly with that nesting, which is the event page, the blade, right, has the main component, correct? It also has the independent component over here. And then the main component is rendering the child component. And the child component is rendering the third child component. Okay. Obviously, I can copy this code. Got name. Again, as I said, the name can be anything. So I got third child, some random function names. Should be meaningful for you. Definitely not something that I'm doing right now. Because this is more like an explanation. Okay, this is third child component and the name is oops, dollar name. So <clears throat> um, I'll also change this to default third child. Correct. Everything is set and if all things are done properly, if I click this default child, this default third child, and this default should change to Amitabh. And it does. So as you understand, with this concept in mind, you can go as deep in your component structure as possible without worrying about how to pass the data. Right? And this is the beauty of this event-based thing where... Um, the data, the passing of the data becomes very easy. And this is what I wanted to cover in this particular video, because this is important concept that you need to understand. Livewire events has a lot of other things which I will cover in the subsequent video. But this is the, uh, the crux of uh, understanding the, the concept behind events and how in, in your component hierarchy that thing is working. So that's about it, guys. That's what I wanted to cover in this video of events in Livewire. If you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord link below and discuss with me. If you have any questions, feel free to post that on the comments or on Discord as well. If you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.